So Frege gives this now really famous argument against Mill's view. So let's remember that Mill's view was the idea that names, the only thing that names mean is just the things that they stand for. You can tell somebody all about the, name, the meaning of a name by just telling them what person or thing it is a name of. There's nothing more like connotation or anything like that to a meaning of a name. And what Frege wants to argue is that there are just some sort of absurd consequences that follow from this view of names. And basically both of, so I'm going to give you the argue, two versions of Frege's argument. I'm not totally sure myself which one he would have liked better, it's a little bit unclear in the text. But both versions stem from this thing that he noticed, which is that if you have this million view of names, where you think that all there is to the meaning of a name is just what it stands for, then you get the result that any time two, two names are the names of the same thing, then those names must have the same meaning. And he notices that when you put that together with compositionality, the principle that we talked about last time, you get some pretty weird results. So let me just write down quickly the thing he's going to argue for first, which is that uh, on Mill's view, when two names stand for the same thing, they have the same meaning. So this is just something that follows from Mill's view, because remember he says, well, all there is to the meaning of a name is just what it, what it is a name of, what it refers to, or what it stands for. So if two names, even if they're different words, are names of the same thing, i.e. they refer to or they stand for the same thing, well then they just mean the same. That's just a consequence of Mill's view. So this just follows straightforwardly from Mill's view. But now let's see that there's something, something kind of weird happens if you think this is right. And all of the cases that Frege is interested in is are cases where it turns out that two names refer to the same thing, but it was a discovery that, the, that that is in fact the case. So I'll use a fictional case just so we're all on the same page. I'm going to use the case of Clark Kent and Superman. So Clark Kent works as a reporter in the Daily Comet in the, in the story of Superman, but he also has this secret identity as Superman. So in fact they are the same person, Clark Kent is the same person as Superman, but most people don't know this because Clark Kent is so well disguised or whatever by his glasses. Okay, so the first main thing to notice in the story of Superman is that Clark Kent and Superman are the same person. Putting that in terms of language, that means the names Clark Kent and Superman mean the same thing. Let's just draw a quick picture of that. Here's the name Clark Kent. Here's the name Superman. They actually stand for the same guy. You know, with the, with the S. Now, most people don't know this, but they do in fact stand for the same guy. So that means they actually mean the same thing. The word Clark Kent means the same thing as, as the word Superman, because they refer to the same guy. But now, so remember we talked about the principle of compositionality, and that said, well, when you have sentences where uh, the meanings of the words are the same, and they're put together in the same way, then the whole sentence must mean the same. Basically, because Superman and Clark Kent mean the same thing on this million theory, then you should be able to replace one with the other. Because, well, they, as we said, on Mill's view, it looks like they, they mean the same thing, because they stand for the same guy. So you should be, any time you have the word Superman, you should be able to just replace it with the word Clark Kent, and you should get a sentence which means exactly the same thing. Because if you have two sentences, which otherwise all of the words mean the same thing, and you just replace one with another word, which is, which is synonymous, or means the same thing, then that shouldn't change the meaning of the word, meaning of the sentence. So let's take a particular example. So 
So take the sentence, Superman is Superman. This is something that is obviously true. Everything is the same thing as itself. So David Boylan is the same as David Boylan. You are yourself, whoever you are. Identity claims like these, where it's the same name on either side of is, are just totally trivial. Now, remember what we just said. So we said that Clark Kent and Superman, these are two names for the same person, so they mean the same thing. But compositionality tells us that, well, if we have a sentence, we should be able to replace a word with some other word which means the same thing without changing the meaning of the sentence. So we, it should be the case that if we replace, you know, one of these instances of Superman with the name Clark Kent, we get a sentence which means the same thing. Let's write that down. Clark Kent is Superman. Let's go through this again using the principle of compositionality. Well, we know that since these are just the same words, this part of each sentence is the same. But now on the million view, this word means the same thing as this word, because all there is to the meaning of a name is just what it stands for, and Clark Kent is Superman. They stand for the same person. But now what, this ha what happens is that this theory, together with compositionality, tells us that these two sentences actually mean exactly the same thing. To say that Superman is Superman says exactly the same thing, means exactly the same thing as Clark Kent is Superman. And now this looks kind of implausible because, for instance, as we said, this is just a trivial truth. You know, everybody knows that Superman is Superman, or for any, for any object, everybody knows it's identical with itself. Another way to put it is that we know that this sentence is true a priori. We don't have to go out into the world to do any research to find out whether Superman is Superman. It's just something we know is, is true of all objects in general. On the other hand, though, this sentence is not at all obvious. It's not a priori. In the Superman universe, it's a discovery that Clark Kent is Superman. Most people don't know that Clark Kent is Superman. And this seems to be pretty good reason to think that actually it's wrong to say that these two sentences mean the same thing. It's wrong to say they mean the same thing because, well, this expresses something which is obvious, and this, is, this expresses something which was a discovery. But if they don't mean the same thing, that's bad news for the million theory. Because remember, the million theory says these names mean the same thing, together with compositionality. The million theory says, well, these sentences as wholes should mean the same thing, but we've just given an argument to say, well, they can't mean the same thing, because this is obvious, this is a trivial truth that everybody knows. This, on the other hand, is a discovery. It's not something that everybody in the Superman universe knows. So this looks like pretty good reason to think that Mill was wrong about the names. Even though these two names stand for the same thing, this seems like pretty good reason to say, well, there must be more, there must be some difference in their meanings. Because if there wasn't some difference in their meanings, these two sentences would mean the same thing. And it doesn't look like they do mean the same thing. So it looks like it gives us a reason to say the million view is wrong here. I'm going to give you one more version of this argument just to really, just to really drive the point home. So we consider just the simple sentences, Superman is Superman, Clark Kent is Superman. Let's consider some slightly more complex examples. Let's take another kind of sentence. Lois Lane knows Superman is Superman. So remember, on the million theory, because Superman stands for or refers to the same person as Clark Kent, we should be able to replace the name Superman with the name Clark Kent without changing the meaning of a sentence. That's just what compositionality tells us. So we should be able to take this whole bigger sentence and replace the, the name Superman with Clark Kent. So let's do that. Lois Lane knows Clark Kent is Superman. So here we have two sentences. They're almost identical, except that in here the first one has Superman, and here the second one has Clark Kent. But remember, on the million view, 
these two things mean the same because they stand for the same object. So it should be these two entire sentences mean the same thing. Because apart from this, they're put to, they have all the same words put together in the same way. And the only words that differ actually mean the same thing in the end. So another way of putting it is that the difference between these two sentences should just be like, according to Mill, it should just be like the two sentences with bachelor and unmarried man. They should mean the same thing, and the only difference is just the words we use, not the meanings they express. But again, that looks wrong in this example. It doesn't really look right to say these two sentences mean the same thing. And the reason is just simple. It's because in the Superman universe, one of them is true and the other one is false. It's true that Lois Lane knows Superman as Superman, because everything is identical with itself, so she does know that. But it's not true that Lois Lane knows that Clark Kent is Superman. That's something that's a mystery to her. She doesn't know the identity of Superman. She's trying to find out who Superman is. She doesn't know that Clark Kent is Superman. She doesn't know that Superman has been... The, the actual Superman has work, been working alongside her all this time. So this is another problem, another version of the same problem for Mill. If you say that names just mean what they stand for, then it looks like you have to say that when two names stand for the same thing, they mean the same thing. That in turn would say that it should be that whenever you have one name, you could, uh, you could replace it with the other name. So for instance, since Superman means the same thing as Clark Kent, it looks like whenever you have the word Superman, you should just be able to replace it with the name Clark Kent. Because after all, on Mill's theory, we get it just follows that these two mean the same thing. And you should be able to do that without changing the meaning of the sentence you started with. But as we've seen for two reasons now, that looks false. We've seen two different kinds of examples where you can take a sentence replace it with a name that stands for the same person, and it does seem to change the meaning of the sentence. But if compositionality is true, that then just looks like good reason to think that Mill's theory is wrong. It looks like good reason to think, well, actually, there has to be some difference in the meanings of these names. Otherwise, how do we explain that these two sentences mean different things? So that is basically Frege's argument against the Millian view. He says, well, look, you get this prediction that whenever meaning... Whenever names stand for the same thing, they have the same meaning. And we can just think of a bunch of cases where this leads us into trouble. In particular, it makes it very hard to understand what's going on with identity claims, where it looks like the, identi the relevant identity is not something that everybody knows. 